Because we serve. Because I don't want nobody else to go in there with the toilet bag up. Not that I'm the pastor and sit back and say, y'all go fix that toilet. No, we in this together. And if I am a servant leader, the chief principle of that phrase is servant. Okay, all right. That's a whole other lesson right there. That's a whole other lesson. Uh, I know, I know y'all can't give no amens because you ain't it's messing with your theology right now. Because you say king of kings and lord of lords, but you forget he was washing feet and serving bread. talked about Judas a few weeks ago and if you haven't, uh, if you were not here or you didn't stream that day, you need to go back and watch that sermon. I think it was first Sunday last month. But, but, but I got stuck y'all. I got stuck in the moment. I got stuck. I got stuck. I got stuck because as we were closing as we were closing that sermon y'all, as we were closing the sermon on Judas and Jesus referring to Judas as his friend while he was doing enemy tactics, Jesus was identifying him as a friend and, and as we were closing that sermon y'all, as we were closing that sermon, I saw Peter, it was like the Holy Ghost just tapped me on, on the shoulder and said, Peter right there you, you, you forgot about Peter. And I got stuck, Kim. I've been stuck for about a month trying to figure out. Now, we know, we know how the story ends. So we know that Peter preaches powerful sermons and thousands of people join the church. We know that Peter speaks in tongues and, and uh, with the other disciples. They speak in tongues and people are hearing it in their own language, various languages. And then Peter is able to... Re so we know what happens after the table. But in the moment, I want to tell you what I got stuck on. I got stuck at... In the moment, while you are serving, what is the difference to you in the moment between a betrayer, a betrayer and a denier? I got stuck there, y'all. I got stuck because I'm thinking to myself, okay, okay, they both sitting at the table. They both being served. They both have seen Jesus raise the dead. They both have seen Jesus heal the sick. They both have seen Jesus create an all-you-can-eat buffet in the wilderness and feed thousands of people. They have both sat at his feet while he is teaching and unpacking the mysteries of the kingdom to them. And then in the moment while he's preparing to go and die for them, this one over here is setting him up working with the crowd to get him killed. And this one over here will be silent and act like he don't know him while they are taking him to be killed. And I put myself in the place of Jesus trying to figure out in the moment, what is the difference between your betrayer and your denier? We had a leadership conference a couple of months ago, and Apostle uh, Dwayne Hunt said, a silent friend is a public enemy. And so I got stuck there. I got stuck there. But I couldn't ever get a sermon. I couldn't ever figure out what the lesson was for us in Greater Harvest. And then the Lord shifted that thing on me because I saw Peter as us. I'm so focused, you know, we're in, in America, you know, we are so me-centered by default in this nation because we got, you know, rights that other nations don't have. You know, other nations have to be subject to their leader, your, your king or your prime minister. You have to be subject to, in America, we vote them in, we vote them out. Right, right, right. So a lot of the stuff about kingdom and, and authority goes right over our heads. So I'm focusing on how do I handle my betrayer? How do I handle my denier? And then the Lord said, nope. Move over into Peter's spot. That was the issue. Because when I started looking at it that way, I'm looking at Peter now, 
sitting in the presence of the Lord. And then a few verses earlier, Peter is the whole group. Jesus said, uh, the one that's going to betray me is sitting at the table right now. And everybody questions themselves. They all questions them, they, they all question themselves. Is it I? Lord, is it I? Lord. Then when they determine that it's Judas, then they start having an argument about who's gonna take over when Jesus is gone. Pastor ain't here, who gonna preach? Pastor in the hospital, who gonna take over the church? G Listen, Judas ain't even, the plan and Kendra, the plan ain't even happened yet. Jesus is still at the table with him and they go from, ooh, who is it going to betray him? Is it I? Is it me? Uh, well, who going who gonna to be the boss? Who, who going to take over when he's not here? See how quickly that flesh rose up? He is instituting the Lord's Supper. This is the most, one of the most critical moments that he has left for us. He is, he is ministering to them. He is teaching us how to serve. He is teaching us how to handle your enemy and teaching you how to be patient with those who are not who they will become in your life. And in that moment, they get so selfish that they start arguing about who is the greatest. And he stops and he does a lesson on serving to let them know, listen, who, who's the greatest at the table? The one that's sitting at meat or the one that's being served? Who, who's the greatest? The one that is the guest being served or the one that's serving? And the answer normally is the one that's being served is the greatest. And then he said, but I'm serving you. Amen. Greater harvest. I got about three amens on that. How we know who is the greatest, who has the capacity, who has the heart of God is how you serve. That's how we identify who is the leader. Now listen, just being a believer, if we're believers, I wish I had an ID badge. If we, if we are a believer, our ID badge is love. That's how we identify ourselves one to another with love. But if you are a leader, if you are big, if you are called, not only do you have an ID badge that says love, but then you also has one, have one that says servant. He gets their thinking together because they are taking the spiritual lessons that he is giving them and conforming them to the world system. Let that toilet stop up. Let the toilet stop up. They had to make me not go in there. You know why? Because we serve. Because I don't want nobody else to go in there with the toilet bag up. Not that I'm the pastor and sit back and say, y'all go fix that toilet. No, we in this together. And if I am a servant leader, the chief principle of that phrase is servant. Okay, all right. That's a whole nother lesson right there. That's a whole nother lesson. Uh, I know, I know y'all can't give no amens because you ain't, it's messing with your theology right now. Because you say king of kings and lord of lords, but you forget he was washing feet and serving bread.